Kelly, it sounds like you're in a rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just double check we are live. If you're on LinkedIn and you can see us, give us a little comment down below. Let us know that we're live. And then, yes, we are. You can see we are live. So we'll just wait a we're couple minutes before can, everyone yeah. comes in. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we've got eight people joined us, 10 people, 15. And they're all coming in. Hi. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Say hello. Tell us where you where you come from, who you are in the comments below. Hi, Natasha. Welcome. I am going to... Hey, Bethany. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm very excited here. I'm usually on 10 megabyte broadband and I have been upgraded. I have a gigabyte of internet. It's, it's, this is like this is like geek Christmas for me. Here's cool. It was the, the most exciting day for me ever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but I'm out in the country and I've had the worst broadband for a long, long time. We're just going to wait a wee second until everyone join us. Hi for everyone who's joined us so far. If you've just popped in, say hello in the comments below. Let us know where you are. Hello, Peppa. Oh, cool. Peppa's joined us. Hey, Peppa. Hi, Peppa. Oh, I hi, love man. Awesome. How's the weather? How's the weather outside? I don't think I've actually looked outside today. <laughs> I've been, I've been too busy on the my law. What's that? You've been too busy on the internet. I have. Oh, we've lost Kelly. She'll be coming back in a second. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Oh, Dean's in the house. Yeah, Nadim, it's the it's the, this this internet. You can't understand how excited I am. <laughs> Usually, I'm glitching <laughs> back and forth by now. This is this is welcome to the welcome to the modern world, huh? Hope you're well, man. Cool. We'll just wait on Kelly coming back in. She's in Berlin, and so she's struggling a little bit with signal, unlike me. <laughs> yeah, but she is in Berlin, though, buddy. To be fair, so yeah, true. I'm in, I'm in Eaglesham in Scotland. Hey, Bethany's in the Barras. That's cool. More people from Dumfries. Excellent. Cool. Oh, we've got Kelly almost back in. Give me a second and I'll just... Hi, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like turning every device on in the house just just because I can. Now that's... Make the most of it. I better test a couple of couple more PlayStation games, get them downloaded, just to make sure. Make sure it's good. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. Kelly's back. <laughs> Kelly is back. Sorry. Right, we will get started. Thanks I was for joining us, everyone. I'm sorry. I got That's shy. Right. <laughs> Don't worry. Whatever spot where you had that good bit of signal. Well, let's just kick off yeah, it now. Yeah. Right in the the jungle so first of all thank you so much for coming and just want to say a big hello to everyone and um, one of the promises we will make is that we will finish bang on six o'clock so it's a really really busy time for everybody at the moment and it's always important to know when we start and when we finish so bang on six o'clock if we cut you off that's just how it's going to be so well, can i cut I'm you off Brown. rachel is that, is that am, I allowed, am i allowed to cut you off then <laughs> you always do <laughs> Okay, I put, I put you off your floor there. Start again. Start again. Like this is like. I feel like I'm like in that mood. Hell, it, <laughs> this is not Markham and Wise. I can assure you of that. <laughs> so I'm Rachel Brown from the Creative Entrepreneurs Club, and and uh, the Creative Entrepreneurs Club is a member-driven network which is about connecting, upskilling, and empowering creatives. We've just over 1,400 members at the moment, and everybody ranges from dance to digital, marketing to music, computer games to craft, performing arts, TV, publishing, and actually over 23 different parts of the creative industries are part of the Creative Entrepreneurs Club. So I just want to talk really quickly about the aim of this series and what we're hoping to cover, because this has been a really strange time for us all. But one thing we have learned, if we've learned anything, is that creativity is needed more than ever. 
And what we want to do with these series is simply showcase brilliant creatives who are doing brilliant things. So today we're going to jump into an interview with James Rennie and Kelly Conway, who are the founders of the newly formed, as in one week old, Business Collective Scotland, which is a community interest company whose sole purpose is to celebrate, support and connect small independent businesses across Scotland. So who are James and Kelly? So James, after five years working in London in visual merchandising for some of the big high street names like Ted Baker, Karen Millen, James moved home to Glasgow to start his own business. James, although learned a lot from these big brands, strongly feels that smaller brands have the capacity for offering so much more attention and so much more personal service, which is crucial, I think, at this time. Kelly moved to Glasgow five years ago after being in London with a professional background in marketing events for the hospitality industry and the creator of what most of you will know, the Glasgow Vintage and Flea Market and Glasgow's Independent Market, which is now known as Supermarket Events. Supermarket Events. Kelly has a deep-rooted love for markets, having been around them a lot as a child because um, our grandparents were antique dealers, which I'm sure we're going to come back to at this moment. So we're delighted to have them here. And I'm just going to hand back over to Andrew Dobie. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks. I'm glad to see you're getting the hang of your cameras. Rachel was having a bit of a panic earlier on that she had to kind of <laughs> know how to, to, to look at the camera or to look at the screen. So, so, so it's a new world. But, you know, thanks to everyone that's joined us. I, I can't decide, is this our third or second one of these series? I think it's the third for these, but it's actually maybe the fifth or sixth um, because we had a few more before that. We were kind of focused on, I suppose, a little bit of um, panic <laughs> when COVID started. And um, we're trying to figure things out as, a, you know, as everyone has been um, um however now you know the, the kind of focus of these um the, these live streams that we're doing are, are kind of based on creativity and trying to inspire creativity um you know very much as rachel mentioned we all need a bit of creativity right now to kind of problem solve and we all need a bit of inspiration so we hope these sessions uh, give you a little bit of inspiration and um, might give you sort of that um, little kick on to the, the next idea that you need um, um or you might just um you might just get to sleep for an hour. So if you want to just have a wee sleep, you can also do that. That's that's also uh, okay. So um, for those who don't know, I'm Andrew. I'm the founder here at Made Brave. Um, we're running these on um, the Made Brave LinkedIn channel. We had previously been running them on Zoom. We're just testing a few different channels, see what we like. We've also been very lucky to get LinkedIn live quite early. So we're trying this platform out. So thanks for joining us. Appreciate you hanging out with us um, on Tuesday at five o'clock. Um, if it's that time in the week for you, go and grab a glass of wine um, or go and grab a coffee, whatever uh, suits you best just now. Um, but, you know, um, for those who don't know, um, Rachel and myself at the sort of beginning of the COVID thing happening, we sort of joined forces. Um, Rachel very kindly um, gave the Creative Entrepreneurs Club uk site um, and we worked um, a little bit together to bring that to the creative industry to help support people um, I suppose during this kind of very strange time so if you if you're interested you can head over um, and I'm just going to pop up that little link there to creative entrepreneurs club uk on the platform and um, there's a load of really friendly people um, who are giving free one-to-one -one sessions uh, I did a couple of those today um, and, um, you know, there's lots of people, Rachel, and um, lots of really helpful people who are kind of there. If you're just struggling for, you know, what to do next, um, if you if you if you want to kind of just blether to someone for an hour, get something off your chest. Um, we'll do our very best to help you if we can within our network, within our expertise. And there's lots of different expertise. There's financial advisors, there's operations people, there's creative people. So go and pick brains if you if you need that bit of help. You can also, also access the job board on there. So we've got lots of people posting jobs um, and sharing jobs. Um, so if you're if you either, if you're looking for a job right now and you found yourself in the unfortunate position of that, there's lots of jobs being posted over there. Also, if you're looking to hire people please jump across there put them on the platform as well also on linkedin here and um, we have created a group together called the creative industry covid support group so if you literally just type that somewhere up here um on uh, linkedin down here or up here i don't know where we're actually um 
Or, <laughs> there somewhere. Um, if you type that in, you will see our group. There's about three and a half thousand people who have joined that group and they're all helping each other. Um, so people are posting uh, links to grants, links to support, links to jobs, and um, again, just moral support. So um, please feel free to jump across to either of those areas if you're looking for a wee bit of help just now. Um, but yeah, I'll pass it back over to Rachel um, and we'll get started with today's session. So thank you so much. Those of you who are just joining us, um, we're doing a quick interview here with Kelly and James, who are the co-founders of Business Collective Scotland, which is a brand new platform. And it's all about our wonderful, small, independent Scottish, Scottish businesses who are coming together to support and to celebrate each other, but also to trade, to start moving things forward and to start sharing what they can sell, what they can buy, what they can collaborate together, a whole range of different stuff. And these guys have got some really big plans, so we're super excited to have them. So let's get the conversation started. Kelly and James, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna kick off with Andrew. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm so thank jealous you. of you in Berlin. Let's just put that right out there. Kelly is in there. Oh, Berlin. you're not supposed to tell you on that. I'm telling everyone that, honey. We are telling everyone that. <laughs> um, I'm going to hand you over to Andrew in just a minute. But just before, I'm going to ask the first question. Um, James, tell us a bit about yourself and your background, because it's super interesting. And we've known each other a while now. And I'm always amazed when you just pop up and go, yeah, I was just like styling this person. I was working with Ted Baker. It's all good. Um, He's so casual about it. So it casual. Just happened. It just happened. Um, so I actually studied broadcasting at uni, and when I graduated, um, like a lot of people, I guess, were like, actually, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, so I went traveling for a summer to the States and then came back and just started working part time with Ted Baker in Princess Square. Um, and it kind of just snowballed from there. I got sucked into retail. Um, I started doing visual merchandising in the Glasgow store. And then the following Christmas, I um, moved down to London. So within a couple of weeks, um, I was doing the visual for Selfridges with Ted. So that was a massive shock to the system and thrown in at the deep end, really. Um, and then I spent five years in London working for various brands um, across the city, Catamillan, House Fraser. Um, and I loved it. I learned so much. But really, the thing you said in the intro, it's not the same as shopping with a small brand that you really get personal service with. Um, so that sort of gave birth to Ryan James Studio, which is my own kind of menswear focused lifestyle store um, that I launched in 2016. Mm -hmm. Kelly, how, how did you, sorry, Andrew, on you go. No, all right, on you go, after you. I was gonna say, Kelly, how did you come to create what you've created? Uh, so I think like a lot of creatives, I had, I've, I've had like lots of jobs. Um, Sorry, I'm just making sure I can connect. Um, so like a lot of creatives, I um, I never really, I had lots of jobs and got lots of experience, but I never quite fitted in, in what I did. And then I always have, have done markets and my grandparents were scrap dealers and they were antique, and then they, they became antiques dealers. So markets were always something that I did. And then I got into events and restaurants and bars and it was always like touching on the sort of, creative world but not quite and it, it's almost something like like you know your family job and you always say no I'm never going to do that I'm never going to do that and then you you grow up a bit and you go oh no wait that is what I'm supposed to do so when I moved to Glasgow I, I just found the perfect opportunity to to start the vintage market and it was just really fun and a, a great way to sort of you know, see what they're doing in the barras and involve people like that and, and just really um, like professionalize what the vintage and antique sellers were doing and, and like introduce them to Instagram and social media. And then it was actually a conversation, as all good business ideas are, a late night conversation with James to start involving small businesses. And, and of course, a lot of wine involved. Um, start including small businesses and that's how then we develop supermarket so and then I just think what Glasgow and Scotland has a, as a whole is just really passionate fun friendly small businesses and it was it was like a pleasure to work with them and give them a, a successful platform to uh, sort of professionalize and modernize markets as a whole in Scotland which it was a really fun exciting thing to do and I kind of 
suddenly went, oh, this is where I belong. This is what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah. And for anyone to, who wants to have a wee look at Supermarket, is it, what's the URL for that, Kelly? Uh, so it's supermarketevents.com. Hopefully we'll be back soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose um, for, for both of you then, you know, James, maybe if you want to kick off, like, you know, how has kind of COVID sort of affected your own business? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, towards the end of last year, actually, my store was based in uh, Merchant City in Osborne Street, um, so right by South Block, which I'm sure a lot of people will know. Um, and towards the end of last year, football was down as it was kind of across the board. So I sort of made the decision to fill out the shop and focus more on markets and pop-up events. Um, after a lot of conversations with Kelly about it, I decided that, that was the way to go and then really focus on the online business. So it's been kind of double double sided on one you know of course sales have dropped and um, but the interest is definitely still there and because we'd started pushing more people online from kind of january february onwards mm -hmm. actually it's remained quite steady and um, considering but i think being a small business it's much easier to adapt and um, which i think some will probably come on to as the, the conversation goes on um, Certainly, a lot of the business collective members have got some really great examples how they've managed to, to pivot or react to the situation and to make their business work for them. And what about you, Kayleigh? Um, So, obviously, what I do is mainly events based. So, that was a massive kind of hit the red button, everything stops. Um, and it, it was kind of one of those situations that I think I was a little bit in denial about. And I was like, well, we'll be back in two weeks we'll be back in three weeks and then suddenly as as the news went on but i think the main thing for me was i've got a ama an amazing community with my and relationship with my storeholders and the small businesses that are involved in my events and they've been an absolute rock and so supportive because we've just had to put on hold pretty much everything and until it's safe to do so to get back up and running and um, but everyone has has been so understanding and they've all been in their own businesses and what they do. So like James says, like they've all pivoted their, their business. They've all been really positive and helping each other and helping their community that it's been really inspirational. So what could have just been, I mean, for a couple of weeks, we were all just kind of a bit miserable and wondering what was going on. But I think it's, it's a great community to be a part of that we've kind of bounced back with some resilience and, and we will be back. But it's for me as, as, I don't have a product to sell apart from the events has been a massive like just stop on everything we did a um I did like a an online market which I think kind of based like that was the base of uh business collective Scotland seeing what we can do online and we raised two thousand pounds in the first couple of weeks for food banks in Glasgow so that mm -hmm. was like another great like a great thing that our storeholders were a part of and they're always so great to help their community so it, it could have been a lot worse than it was but we've we've completely stopped now all in-person events until it's safe to do so so that's why i think business collectors scotland even personally for me just having something to work on that continues the work that we've done already has been such a positive step Sure. So, so you know, um, during this time, then you've both you've you, you know started the Business Collective Scotland. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that is and why you've why you've created it? Yeah. So I think it's a conversation that Kelly and I've been having for a while. The idea of bringing um, a directory of small businesses online. So obviously, Kelly creates this massive range of traders at the markets, and quite often you'd say that people would approach you afterwards to find out what a certain brand was or who made a product. So just this idea of it being in one place, but being in the current situation, it seemed like this was a really positive reaction to COVID and it kind of made it its own thing that ran alongside supermarket events as well. Um, so I guess the main kind of point of it is to celebrate, support and connect small businesses across Scotland. And they can be from any kind of sector. We have food and drink, fashion designers, art and design, and graphics and video. Um, and really it's about creating this network that people can collaborate and support each other. And Kelly might want to dip in there as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think something that personally both me and James felt is we, we've 
like we just became friends and we because we both ran small businesses that were in in very different industries but most of the problems or things that we went through kind of very much related to each other and and I have that with a lot of people that I know who run small businesses that aren't necessarily in the same industry as me but we all face the same problems and issues so we wanted to create we were talking about it and it's like a lot of the isolation that you feel as a small business as well. So we wanted to create a group that that's not industry based, that's open to anyone that's running a small business in Scotland. So that kind of we enjoyed um, kind of even the support of having a good moan on a Friday about your week and, sure. and to just allow small businesses um, to have that. And then things like tax questions or where should I promote my my business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we wanted to make a space that's open to all industries and all types of people from all types of backgrounds, because actually a lot of the the, the issues that we face are are the same. So it was it, again just from conversations between me and James and the support that we give each other. We wanted to sort of open that to other people. So I think that that is a, a huge huge part of what we want to do, and, and we're already doing is that kind of just feeling that feeling that you're part of something bigger and you're part of a community totally rich you want to jump in yeah so what's the reaction been like because you guys only launched was it last week yeah, so yeah. Two, yeah. Weeks yeah. two weeks ago sorry so james what's, yeah. what have people been saying um to be totally honest, we've been totally blown away by the reaction. I think we set a pretty low target of members that we want to involve and approached a few people about it, um, and to smashed it. So um, we we launched, <laughs> um, we launched with 50 members, um, and now we're up to over 70. So I think to do that in two weeks has just been a massive boost. And, and I we, think had an, we had an aim for 30 in the first week. Yeah, yeah. We were like, if we get 30, we'll be great. And then we launched with 50, and it was just like... I think it was like word of mouth and then a, a lot of people that know us. But then what we what I think surprised us is we had so many businesses that we've we've never worked with or, or heard of before that approached us that just like have bought into the idea of what we're doing. So I think, yeah, we've the the, re the reaction has been amazing. And yeah, we're, we're so grateful for the support that we've had so far and and how you know in terms of of the launch you know there, there might be some people listening just now that you know might want to launch something similar or launch kind of the same sort of initiative how did you go about launching it you know what was what was the kind of tactics you used so i think it was mostly on social and um, so it was very much soft launch like you said um it's like you're launching anything new you have that worry in the bottom of your stomach don't you so we're like okay we'll kind of keep it quiet-ish in the beginning and then let it grow, let it grow organically and see how it, how it goes. Um, but even it's that, just your, your party. You think it, no one's going to turn up to your party. It was pretty exactly. much that feeling for the first like couple of days. But <laughs> Yeah, so it was a lot of social um, sharing um, and was going up. So it was, um, word of mouth was really the main driver for it. Sorry, I'm just muting you there, Kelly. Someone's obviously walking past you with lots <laughs> of children just ran up to me. Drowning out James. Poor James. <laughs> so you said that um, social was a key driver, and I think for some people listening um, who have been thrust into using social for the first time, which seems some this does seem um a unusual to think that but actually there have been so many businesses that have been caught out in COVID at the moment because they've not been able to react in the same way but you guys were you guys were pretty systematic and you thought it all through even though it was a soft launch um, about your party so was there anything that was 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 Instagram feel more favorable was it Facebook was it LinkedIn what, what kind of tips and tricks can you give us well I think what we did initially um was to really use the network that we already had so obviously i have my sort of my community and james has his community so we reached out to those first and i think it's something that any business can and should do is think about who in your even in a place like scotland especially where everyone knows each other or everyone's connected because uh, it's not the biggest of places it's like just think about who you know and who you can reach out to because i i 
since I've moved to Scotland, I found that people are very, very, very willing to help each other. So if you want an introduction to someone that knows someone who knows someone, those people will make that introduction for you. So we really used our network and, and encouraged them to then reach out to their network. And, and I think that really helped spread the news and people, especially in Glasgow, and, and further afield in Scotland are very happy to, to make those connections, which I think is, is like a really nice thing. And it's very useful for especially small businesses. And, and do, do you, in terms of aspirations, is it, you know, I'm just interested to understand and know, you know, how, how big do you want this thing to get? You know, do, do you have an idea yet? Or are you just kind of rolling with it as it, as, as it, as it launches? Um, I mean, it can be as big. As it can, there's nothing really stopping it, is there? Um, probably, we'd be really happy to take it across all the major cities in Scotland. I think we've already had interest, you know, from Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Inverness, um, in Greece. So it's really, like really saying, people's extended networks are bringing more and more people in. So we're just quite happy to keep pushing it and um, see, see where it goes. Yeah, I think that's going to be like our next sort of our phase two is how do we reach, because we 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 know small businesses in Glasgow, but I think that's gonna be one of our major challenges because we're no, sort of known here in the small business world, but it's like, how do we reach other cities? And I think that is our members, almost their their networks. And I think that's, that is gonna be one of our challenges going forward, but we're, we're really excited to learn more about each city and how we can benefit them because because each, each city and town and, and places is, is slightly different. So I think that's going to be like a major learning curve for us. Yeah, I think, I think the trick with any kind of membership organisation, if it's location based specifically, is to kind of is to, to look very closely on one location first, make sure that that works and make sure that one thrives. Um, and then, you know, once you have a working model, a working understanding of how it works, then it's, just, you know, looking to move. I mean, one thing just thinking with my branding brain on here is that, you know, that's why I was, I was kind of interesting to understand your aspirations is that you know by putting that word Scotland at the end you limit yourself to Scotland. Um, now this is this you know the world has very much shown us over the last little while that, that it's very much smaller than we all knew because we're all connect, connected everywhere, and you know and the business collective idea is something that's scalable everywhere. So you know just I, I suppose just from me thinking branded perspective, it's something to think about early on in your journey. If the aspirations are to grow and scale city by city, then you know why limit yourself just to one country. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have yeah, I think that I think well. yeah, I think that for us is because we want to really. I feel like Scotland has a, an amazing wealth of small businesses and creative businesses, and it, it was that idea of a little bit like what Supermarket does, a little bit of what Ryan James does is give a platform to Scotland and and those businesses that are based in Scotland and it was to, to champion that idea that like Scotland is just as good as everyone else in the world and has its own unique brand of creativity so I feel like having having because the idea for us is that people would seek out business collectors Scotland to find cool independent mm. brands in Scotland so we kind of wanted to tie tie that in to 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 location base so and it's what we know and it's what we love so but uh yeah we Excellent. we hope we something that we want to do as well is make sure that scott like business like scotland is like people all over the world shop with us eventually uh, <laughs> we too but you know good yeah to have a plan <laughs> brilliant i suppose with my um my head on i'm i'm, I'm thinking oh there's a licensing model in there somewhere as well so um look out business you know business collective sweden <laughs> business collective <laughs> germany um germany, so andrew and i are already <laughs> on the world's domination piece for you so that's like totally <laughs> cool as you would expect so tell us what is um, what is membership james tell us what's the detail of the membership why would a small business based in Scotland who really has got some fantastic stuff to sell, why would they take part in Business Collective Scotland? So I think being a small business owner myself, I know that one of the main things is getting to market and in front of your customers. And um, so our first main point is celebrating a small business. So really using our reach and our social channels to promote people's products um, to the right people. So obviously we've got the great outlet supermarket. 
um, which is, will be a physical event, um, but also to give away maybe one of our plans down the, down the line is to have a, a business collective shop as well, whether that be online or physical space, we'll work that out later. But um, that is the main benefit, really getting your product in front of people. Um, so through our mailers, through the directory, which I think Andrew's got a, a screen of, you can um, check that out on oh. business, sorry, businesscollectivescotland.com. And, and that was, yeah, sorry, I'm just pulling that back up. <laughs> um, so all of our members are split across um, their specific categories. So we've got fashion, art and design, services. So it's really easy to navigate. Um, and hopefully our SEO is on the up. Um, it'll be really easy to find the people, people there. And like Kelly said before as well, support is a massive thing for us. So the majority of our members work by themselves. Um, so we have a private members group that everyone can jump on. Um, have a chat, ask questions, um, and they know that that support is there for them. Um, so, yeah. is, so is it? Am I am I getting this right? It's like two things. So, if I if I own a small business, I can jump on, be part of the collective, be supported by other businesses, get some chat around some bits and bobs, finance, routes to market, that kind of thing. But also as a customer. Can I jump on and find what I'm looking for? So if I'm looking for like that cool small gift that I don't want to go shopping in the high street for just now, I want to do something online or I want to send my mum something cute. I can be a consumer as well as a small business owner. Yeah, completely. Right. That was something because it was kind of, it was an idea kind of people would contact me who were unable to go to supermarket or they were based in other locations and they, either had or they'd been to the market and they'd seen businesses that they wanted to find again and it that kind of fed into this idea that we wanted to give a platform a directory that people can search through and it's this idea of because i feel like um everything that's happened with covid has actually encouraged people to shop small so we want to make it as easy as possible for people to shop small and shop scottish so we want like really cool really creative brands in one place and just make it as easy as possible for the consumer. Excellent. So as we're, as we're talking away here, if anyone's got any questions, please uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll highlight them and the guys can jump in and answer them if you have any. So um, yeah, don't be scared. So can I ask just a question about with lockdown measures easing and there seems to be great news for the retail industry. But what can we do to support small brands and independent businesses? Because, you know, people are going to know, you know, a bigger shop that can hold 100 people can easily manage that kind of distance and space. We're not going to be able to do that as independent retailers. But as customers, as a consumer, what can we do to help? So we kind of Sorry, James, I'm going to ask you, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Jump into James first, Kelly. So we touched on it before yeah, before sure. that um, so many businesses, you know, they might not have had a social presence before or their website wasn't quite up to scratch. Um, so many of them now have embraced that. So you can actually shop locally through their own website. You don't need to go to a physical space. Um, so one of our members actually is Zero Waste Market. They are, uh, I'm sure a lot of people know them, uh, reducing waste. That's their whole goal in their store. Um, but obviously people can visit. So overnight, literally, they launched a quick and collect service for fruit and veg boxes and um, all your oils, things like that, um, and devised a system without any special software. They just created it and it worked. They were getting 100 orders per day, um, which is an amazing response for such a small business to be able to react like that. So I think that's also a benefit of being small. You can do it much, much quicker than the big guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think just on the point of zero waste market, something that they because we what we did before we uh, we chatted to the members and asked them like what have you done during lockdown and what are the challenges and something they've found is so, since the supermarkets were relaxing their measures, they found the demand for their service went down. So I think it's what we'd love the uh, like the public and consumers to do is like remember who was. The, the small businesses really made an effort when you, you most needed it. Um, so I would say as well, like just continue to shop with them. Um, but also I think something is that like a lot of people maybe have found themselves in a, in a 
financial difficulty, but you can still support local shops and businesses with likes and shares and making sure that we're supporting them online, necess not necessarily when you, when you can shop with them and hopefully down the line you can shop with them and support them, but there's other ways to make sure that you're supporting local before you can shop with them. So I think it's remember, remember that the small guys are still there even though the big guys are opening up and if you if you can't, if you don't feel that you can support them financially right now, making sure that you're sharing, you're liking, you're signing up for their uh, email marketing, and just just sort of like commenting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I think is a really good way to support, to remind them that we still love them, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah. Great point. We've had a question come in from Taylor James Scott. It says it would be good to know how you, the collective. Um, can help independent businesses and SMEs post COVID and how um, important a role the collective could play in offering business support that bigger business organizations um, don't always offer independent brands. Um, who wants to go first on that one? Uh, well, I think for myself, hopefully supermarket can come back, which is obviously a great place for small markets to, uh, at small businesses to sell directly um, but something that we really want um, the Business Collect Scotland to be is a place that people can shop directly with the brand. So that's something that we are developing. Um, and I think that it's this idea of sort of strength in numbers for the independents. So we can kind of, although it, it, it's kind of weird to say, but like take on the bigger guys together. And if we can, I think something that, I've really understood for small brands is they struggle to keep on top of their, their website, their email, their Instagram, their Facebook, their Twitter, as well as create their product. So if we can collectively give them a platform that they know that they're going to drive traffic to or SEO, where it kind of gives them time to focus on their product. So that's hopefully what, well, what we aim for with business clients in Scotland is to give them a platform that gives them more time to focus on what they enjoy doing which is the creative side of things excellent excellent and I suppose just um, a question for me practically you guys are both running businesses you know you know business generally when businesses run well it's when they have um, you know kind of good focus and kind of there's a lot of effort and a lot of work goes in as you guys know I'm just interested to know how you're managing it how you're kind of how you're splitting your time just for for other people that are kind of having to sort of pivot adapt change at the moment and um, you know how much time are you kind of still in working on your, your your existing business how much time are you guys putting into this I think Google Calendar has become our best friend just stuck to it constantly and sharing between things and sharing ideas and um, Right now, we're kind of working on it like two days a week. So it's amazing. I think once you really get your head in something and stuck into it, how much can actually turn out. You know, like we said, this conversation started during COVID. So the business clips have probably launched within about six weeks. You know, with that number of members, the website was done and um, the socials have been up and running. Um, so I think it's just being, I guess, firm with yourself. If you want to make it happen and you've got a set time, you will. And we kind of set first of July as a deadline, um, so it had to be ready. That that was it. Yeah, I de I definitely think it it's actually probably helped me focus on supermarket more, mm -hmm. having the focus of and having the accountability because that's also something that we want we encourage our members to do is to share their tasks and their goals for the week because I feel like as a small business owner when you're working on your own you don't have much accountability so you're like oh, i'll do it tomorrow oh, i'll do it next week whereas i know that james will meet tomorrow on video chat and we'll need to do the tasks that we need to do so because me and james actually haven't met in person yet since setting up this business and i think that, that yeah. that's been a really interesting thing for both mm. of us because i absolutely hated video chat before and would always meet with people in person and I'm just like oh i hate video chat but i think it's been amazing that we've managed to settle this business and it's it's been an interesting like we've been forced into doing it this way but it's it's great to have that person to connect with and uh, make sure that you're doing your tasks and you're keeping things going and that's what we want to get across to our members especially on the Facebook group it's like tell us what you're doing we'll communicate it together and then you've got that accountability yeah so so Natalie's 
um, placing in a, a, a sort of more of a, uh, an experience. Um, she said, no question as such, just in sharing experience. Uh, during lockdown, my online Etsy store went through the roof. So I feel a strange mix of emotions now that lockdown is eased and my online orders have really started to slow down. So, um, you know, it just proves that people really want to shop in person, is what she's saying. And then, you know, now need to reinstate and expand wholesale. Is there any advice for raising brand awareness? James, you want to jump in on that? Or? Um, um, I think the thing is just keeping in touch with people. So obviously Instagram is like the go-to now. As soon as you pick up, it's so easy to connect. And I know that's how I source new brands. Um, so it's a really good way if you want to expand your wholesale to connect with stores. Just drop them a message on Instagram as the first port of call. Um, and then just see what works for them. You know, how do you want to follow up? Is it with a visit or an email? Some buyers like working just from line sheets. Um, I think with Natalie's product, that's quite an easy thing to do. So, um, you know, the world's your oyster. You could be pitching that to stores anywhere. It doesn't have to be a local, local shop. Yeah, I think that's really important for a lot of our small businesses and our members to get is like that it's not just Scotland, that people want to buy into the idea of, well, people want to buy into Scottish brands and Scottish creatives sort of worldwide, Europe, um, and people who have maybe visited Scotland in the past, they can become your 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 fans and, and keep that going. So I'd probably say um, I know Natalie's business and she's got she's like a fantastic creative and what she's done that's really uh, like inspiring is like expanded her range so much. So she does prints and then she puts those prints on a range of products and I think that that is fantastic that she's like opened up her business to various things. But I think the point of of messaging on Instagram and finding out ways of how how those shops want to be connected is is really important but i think as well is keeping it like james said before sorry just like say what james said before but keeping in touch with your customers i think is really important and once i think a small small business gets a fan i like to call them fans i don't know probably just in my head but <laughs> keeping in touch with them and making sure you get their email and making sure you keep that personal connection going they'll be fans for life and they'll tell your friends about you like make those customers work for you um and make sure that the whole the whole service is 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 excellent and they 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 are then your champions i think is really important for a small business yeah and another key point natalie is um you know when people are talking about your business and no one knows what your business is place it in the comments <laughs> and then you get all the people that are watching this clicking it's on your Etsy store and you nebo get pelco nebo pelco <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i'm dying to see what natalie's business is now. I know. <laughs> yeah it's like natalie, now, get, natalie, it get it in there get it in there, get it in there. <laughs> better be good yeah, <laughs> um, and the other, the other thing I just wanted to ask is you made a really interesting point, Kelly. Although it's Business Collective Scotland, you actually are you're you're, you're hoping to trade off the back of that brand, um, and the back of that that the people want to buy Scottish. But actually, from a, a retailer's point of view, you want people to think global. And 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 so, how do you, how are you? What are your thoughts about getting some um, ways of doing that? Because if you, one of the things that's really challenging with small businesses always, and it comes up time and time again in the work that we do at Crave Entrepreneurs Club, is that people just don't know where to start. It seems like the to-do list is enormous and there's so many things to do. And why would one, why would a customer want to hear from me? And two, oh, I don't know if I can send that to Denmark. I'm not sure. Like there just seems to be like this enormity. Where's a, where's a good place to start? Well, business collector Scotland <laughs> but, oh, yeah totally um well I think that's something that we're learning about our members is like exactly that that do they feel comfortable in in shipping to Europe how do they ship to Europe what products are they sh shipping to Europe how do they reach that market and something that we want to do is is again going back to like the seo is like when people want to send a gift from scotland oh, Kelly, I'll just jump in. first sorry not everybody might not know can you take can you explain what seo is not everybody in that's listening in oh, might not sorry, know that so, 
so sorry it's so search engine optimization which um i really enjoy because it's really nerdy so i'm the nerdy one and james is the cool one um so it's basically getting uh, to the top of google and it's a lot of work and what we want to do is take that work away from our members so that we can and, and what the directory does at the moment is it doesn't sell directly but it points people in the right direction. And also something that we really want to get across is that the directory is curated. So we um, we basically want um, the businesses that are really passionate about what they do and it's a really good level of quality and we know that they, they, they are a good business. Um, so we curate that and collect it together and we hope that in doing so it'll it'll reach a, a almost like a higher level and and people will, will sort of have that level of trust that i think some small businesses lack that when people find their website they're maybe not sure of them so collective again it's like strength in numbers i'm just totally preoccupied with them um, what i'm trying to purchase from natalie here i, know, I, was, I was doing the same on my other screen i just quickly glanced that's, when she popped the link up to have a look at sales. it so there's that's the link for you, sales. You, jump, you jump online and comment Certainly <laughs> purchasing that, natalie. i know I, I was looking at the battlelands one as well i think that's, <laughs> that the shopping cart there's at least two sales <laughs> happening after this so. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> sorry so no great uh, that's brilliant Sorry, we both are completely genuinely distracted. Like <laughs> distracted. <laughs> That's good. We like that. <laughs> yeah. So I suppose um, you know, maybe just a, a little bit of advice for you know some some of the businesses that might be listening just now that might still be in the panic. You know, you know, they might have re realized that their business has changed forever, or you know, has you know still not you know like you with the events are still very very challenging. Have you got any advice? You guys were able to come up with that idea. You were able to generate that. You were able to find each other somehow magically online and uh, and you know create this thing, and you've got it launched within two weeks. For the people who are you know kind of still thinking, I need to do something. What, what would be your a bit of advice to kind of find that focus to find the idea to launch just now well i would say sorry i'm always jumping in james uh, i told you i talk too much i would just say like a lot of our members like pivot like you don't have to stop you don't have to change your business entirely just pivot your business slightly uh, take time take uh, even if it's a couple of days take time to think take time to look back at your business but a lot of our members have pivoted so full circle bakes who uh jackie so she makes the most ridiculously good brownies so she uh, only sold at markets and she took the time and she was she was a bit uh, i think in panic mode at first and then she took the time to realize how she can ship her brownies and keep them good um and post them out and she now composed to the whole of the UK. So she took her time and she's now doing amazingly. So I think it's, you don't have to stop. You don't have to change your business entirely, but, but and also don't be harsh on yourself. Like take the time to realize how you can pivot your business slightly. And also maybe, maybe you don't know what SEO is. Maybe you don't have a website yet. Like ask again, ask become part of a community, ask for help. Because I think something that's really come out of, of, everything that's happened with covid is like everyone wants to help each other even more so now so but yeah, yeah pivot 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 is yeah, my advice i, I could maybe jump <laughs> in on that like, i think that that's you know often people when 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 they are trying to figure out what to do next when they have to adapt they you know you, you go off and start selling toilet roll because everyone's buying like toilet roll but right if you're you know you're <laughs> in a creative business pre toilet roll and um, you know the toilet roll is going to go back down to normal like people aren't going to go to the toilet anymore after COVID it's just you know when we were in that phase that happened so you know what we've been advising businesses when we talk to them is that you know try and pivot around the, the, the core purpose of what your brand was so that's great to hear someone that was selling brownies locally now sells them nationally you know if you're doing something creatively but you can't no longer run an event can you run the event online can you pivot slightly but not miles away because then if you've already got a customer base that know and love your brand they're going to believe more and they're probably go, more likely going to buy your new service or product and um you know so it's not a huge jump for them so you don't have to start and bring and build a new customer base yeah 
And and I think the other thing is don't be afraid of that. I mean, James, you made a tough decision at the beginning of the year to close a shop that you you know you'd had your heart set on it. You were developing it for a long time, but actually, what you discovered was your customers came with you. Absolutely, and I think it can kind of related to what Andrew was saying as well. It's been banded around a lot lately. You know, small business is authentic, and it is really really true. You've got a story and a passion that the big guys don't have, and people really buy into you. And it's, I know Kelly feels similar that it's the hardest thing to put yourself at the front of it. But when you do, that's when you really start to see the rewards. And I know my customers have come with me. Um, I started doing local deliveries within Glasgow um, at the beginning of this. So there's still that contact with them, of course, at a distance. But um, they really want to be on the journey with you. You know, and it's not um, once one thing changes, they're not just going to drop you. Definitely people come along on the ride with you. Brilliant. Fab. I know, yeah, so cool. we're almost out of time, if you can believe it. So please, please do, um, if you've got any questions, please do ask some more questions. More than happy to take it. But I suppose, kind of moving a little bit to the side, um, there's an immense need for leadership at the moment. And you guys have absolutely shown that. Um, and it's been encouraging to see people pitching in and leading their own way. Are there any people that in your own, but as an industry, that have been inspiring to you lately, um, who've done some amazing things that you thought, oh, that I just needed to see that. That gives me the extra edge to move forward. James, what about you? So many. Do you know what? Honestly, the, the way that a lot of the small businesses that we're already in contact have changed the way they do things, I think that's really inspiring. Um, so again, it doesn't need to be the, the big players, it's just that people have really taken some time to think about what they do and how they can make it work for them in the current situation. So I think that's been a massive push for both of us and um, myself, definitely. Magic. Kelly, what yeah, about you? I think, yeah, I think, again, it, it's it's maybe not the, 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 ma the massive stories, but the smaller stories that have been so inspirational for me and the support that I've had from the storeholders. Um, and they all are so, in so invested in supermarket that they're all like, it's okay, we'll be back, we'll be back together and we'll be back bigger. Um, and I think something that really, um, uh, one of the stories that we asked uh, the members of Business Collective Scotland, uh, we, when we asked them for uh, ways in which their lives have changed since COVID, uh, was law design and something I so something that um, Gillian spoke about was her orders went up and she got busier but she mm -hmm. didn't have childcare so I think the the small business parents out there because I, I I have a dog and she's obviously my baby but um, the, ch the the small businesses that have uh, children and then st the, maybe their orders went up but their childcare went massively down. Down. And I think that was for me. Suddenly, I realised that, and I was like, and uh, one thing that Gillian said as well is she had the opportunity uh, for more business, but then had to turn it down. And I think that maybe is one of the things that I didn't realise when she was just a member of the market. But Business Scotland is like open up that dialogue. So it, it. I mean, obviously, if Gillian needs a babysitter, I'm there. But it's like <laughs> things that we can help her with, maybe an opening up the dialogue about like parents in small business and the the day-to-day -day challenges that small businesses face that maybe a problem shared is a problem halved so i think that they're the people that have really inspired me the small stories and the positivity um because we and i had a couple of people come to me and they found it really difficult just mental health wise financially and it's been hard but it's been nice to, to share the experience and to share the stories and the issues and I think that's something in the small business community and the creative community is like we, we all have it we all have friends and we all have this community that we can share that with because it has been such a difficult time so I think it's like they're the stories that have inspired me the, the small wins yeah yeah well, I think that's a very uh, nice comment to end our session on. I think, you know, from, from our perspective, um, you know, we've been really um, overwhelmed. 
um, sorry, <laughs> we've overwhelmed with the kind of support that we've seen coming into Creative Entrepreneurs Club, the, the COVID group yeah. on LinkedIn here. Um, and I think, you know, it's, you know, it's really shown a, a really nice trait of human beings in terms of that when, when stuff goes wrong, that, you know, everyone's coming together and trying to help. And I think if we can hopefully all keep that um, part of the culture as we you know, as we come out of COVID and don't yeah. go straight away back to the way um, things were. Not that the, not that people didn't look after each other before, but I think there's just a new emphasis emphasis on kind of looking after each other and supporting each other. So, you know, uh, you know, uh, we wish you the very best success with Business Collective Scotland and Thank very much so looking forward to watching it grow. And it's nice to be here to talk to you at the beginning of the journey. Um, and you know, we'll see see that grow over the next next wee while. Um, thanks to everyone that took some time out of their evening to come and join us. Um, you know, we will be back. We will be back um, either next week or the following week. We had been trying to do these more consistently weekly, but COVID and everything that comes with that sometimes sends our weeks off in different paths that we weren't quite um, expecting. But so we will be back on the twenty eighth. We have a comedian joining us on the twenty eighth, and not you, Rachel, the comedian. <laughs> not a comedian. Just on that, I'm the cool one in this uh, geek cool relationship. Just so that everybody. <laughs> Am I the geek? Am I right? I'll take the geek. <laughs> The geeks are cool too. I'm the geek, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, we are, we, I'll, I'll happily take the geek uh, title. That's fine. For me. That's fine. Um, but yeah, no, thanks to everyone that's joined us. Um, if you're enjoying the sessions, make sure you um, like the, our pages and um, click on to follow and get notifications when they happen. And we'll be sure and see you the next time. Take thanks care. A lot. Thanks Thank so you. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.